Okay, next problem. Convection zone. Establish the identity. Sine squared theta minus tangent theta divided by cosine squared theta minus cotan theta equals tangent squared theta. All right. How could that possibly be true? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. You got this, all of this, you can be able, hopefully, to apply some identities and maybe some algebra and end up with tangent squared. All right? So again, to establish the identity, I'm going to draw a line because that's not part of my work. That's what I want to show. So I'm going to start with this left-hand side. Typically, I start with the side where there's, where there's more going on, right? where there's more, there's more statements to apply, establish, or to apply identities to. Right? For example, I could do something with sine squared if I want. I could do something with that. If I try to start with this side, well, there's not a whole lot I can do. Um, so I'm going to start typically with this side that looks more com complex, more complicated. All right, so let's give that a try. So rewrite this left-hand side. And apply an identity. So, let's see, what can I do? The way I look at it, you got two choices. You can replace tangent theta with sine theta with cosine, and cotangent with uh, cosine theta over sine theta, right? Or you could replace these with their using the Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta one minus cosine squared, and similar with the cosine squared. Okay, so either way might get you ultimately in the end to tangent squared. So I'm just going to try. I'm going to try and start with those guys and see what happens. All right, so let's. Cosine squared theta did not change. Okay. Doesn't look any better, okay, but that's that's the first step of this. Next thing we're gonna do, I got complex fraction, we got a fraction within a fraction. Typically, there's a couple ways to handle that. You can multiply everything by the least common denominator, and that would get rid of those, or you can add the numerators add, or add these two parts of the numerator together and these two parts of the denominator together. Okay, so what I'm going to try is to multiply everything, the, the, this numerator and this numerator, by the least common denominator of these two fractions. That should clear my problem with complex fraction. Okay, so the least common denominator between the sine and the cosine is the product of the two. Theta divided by sine theta cosine theta. Okay? So remember, I'm going to multiply that product by this difference. I've got to distribute and the same thing down here. So what's sine theta cosine theta times sine squared theta? Well, sine cubed theta times cosine theta minus, and then this times this, the cosine will cancel out. And just be left with sine squared theta. That's the numerator of this fraction. Do the same in the denominator. And I will get something that looks similar. Sine theta cosine theta times that will be cosine cubed theta. Cosine cubed theta times sine theta minus what I get with this product times this quotient. Well, your sines will cancel and you get cosine squared. Okay, that looks a little better. I don't really like that. Okay, but it does look a little better if I can see that I'll be able to do a little bit of factoring next. Okay, uh, so remember, always keep in mind what you're going for. And that's what I want at the end. Well, that doesn't look anything like tangent squared. Well, it doesn't. But I can see that I'm going to be able to factor out a sine squared of theta from this numerator. Right? Because I got sine cubed here, sine squared here. I'll be able to factor that out. And then down here, what can I factor out? A cosine squared. Right? So when I factor something out, I'll have a sine squared over cosine squared. That's a good sign. Right? So let's see what happens. Um, let's see. More space. So let me rewrite real quick. Sine cubed theta. 
cosine theta minus sine squared and cosine cube theta sine theta minus cosine squared. That's what I had. And now for the fact sine squared out here leaves me with still a factor of sine. That guy's still there. And if I factor sine squared out of sine squared, you're left with one. Okay, down here, back up cosine squared. What does that leave me? Cosine theta. One factor of that, and he's still there. Sine theta minus one. Okay? Remember, we want this to say tangent squared. Well, I'm almost there. These are the same thing. Right? Sine theta, cos theta minus 1, cos theta, sine theta minus 1. Same thing. Cos theta times sine theta is the same as sine theta times cos theta. That's the same thing. That's 1. And what am I left with? I'm left with sine squared theta over cos squared theta, which I know to be tangent squared theta. Okay? So after all that work, we got there. Alright, so again, remember the, the key to these is practice. Practice, practice, practice. You gotta do a lot of them so you know what to do. You know when to do that next step. Uh, for example, in this problem, if I go back, okay, let's review. The first thing was apply that quotient identity. And then when I get to here, you'll see this a lot. You'll see this a lot in these problems that I have a complex fraction. Okay, so what I can do with that, well, if you don't know where to go from here, you might want to try to apply an identity to this, or you can try to get rid of your complex fractions. Typically, that's what I like to do, because this is a little complicated, right? Once I multiply by that least common denominator, this isn't quite as complicated, and those, those common factors are jumping out, okay? Practice, 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 keep working on it. Next problem.